hey guys so welcome to this new video and in this video we are going to talk about socrates and plato now socrates is not there directly in the syllabus but nevertheless we have to read about him because he forms uh, the major uh, you know connection between uh, you know major connection with plato actually plato was you know tremendously influenced by socrates so we are going to start with socrates and you know get a brief understanding of him and then we'll start with plato uh, who is going to be the first major thinker of our syllabus now uh, before i start uh, with the you know the actual content i would like to put out a disclaimer here regarding the kind of videos uh, that uh, you know i am going to dish out in these series so uh, see uh, western political thought as such is a very vast subject okay it's a very very vast thing you know you, you know people can you know get their phd's in it okay so it's so that vast now uh, my purpose here is not to uh, you know uh, is not to uh, help you graduate in political science or not to help you earn a phd in it my purpose here is to talk about the things which are exactly relevant from the perspective of upsc civil service that's it you know that is like uh, the be all and end all uh, of this uh, you know this series of videos so uh, keeping this in mind uh, i know you just have to uh, you know even if you find the videos a bit short or maybe you know uh, if you find the videos are uh, you know not that uh, uh that explanatory uh, i guess you can go ahead and read read a bit of uh, brian nelson's book brian nelson's western political thought but i believe what i'll be talking about in these videos they are uh, going to form the core of what is required from the perspective of upsc mains right so let's start with socrates now this is about me so you can just pause the video here and read more about me but i will not waste time here so moving on okay so we start with socrates now uh, for all the thinkers that we are going to study in this uh, in this uh, video or in this series of videos uh, the one thing that you need to keep in mind is you know we are going to deal with uh, three specific aspects of every thinker number 1 the background of the thinker okay no thinker uh, you know is suddenly born out of vacuum okay he doesn't start talking about a philosophy or a concept or an idea out of nowhere there is there are always certain circumstances there are there is always a very strong background which makes him you know do certain things or commit to a certain idea or you know uh, advocate a certain principle okay so uh, for every thinker we will we are going to talk about their background right uh, what made them uh, come up with their philosophy second aspect will be the philosophy itself and uh, what were the contents of the philosophy and uh, how the philosophy it sought to you know uh, remedy the situation at that point of time like if we are talking about socrates if we are talking about plato you know their philosophies in fact all the thinkers they came up with their ideas to solve certain problems so in this uh, say in this part we'll see whether the philosophies were actually able to solve the problems or not and uh, the third aspect will be the legacy that these uh, thinkers uh, have left behind okay uh, you know the kind of uh, ideas that they generated the kind of uh, thinking that they did uh, it did affect the society and it did affect uh, other people as well other thinkers as well so uh, once one thinker uh, you know he dies it doesn't mean that the entire philosophy is dead with him okay so there are others who take it forward or there are others who criticize it modified it modified it or you know do a lot of things with those philosophies so we'll just see how uh, you know this uh, legacy is taken up by the you know the future philosophers and will connect all of them across uh, an integrated timeline right so talking of the timeline i should tell you that uh, you know once we complete the series on western political thought uh, i'll make a separate video on the timeline 
because uh, the timeline is going to be uh, you know it's going to be the uh, i would say the foundation of your understanding of this part uh, so you will have to know very well chronologically which thinker comes at what point of time that you know that is also indirectly connected with your knowledge of world history okay so if you can get the timeline well enough i can assure you that western political thought will not be a problem for you okay so uh, we start with uh, socrates so uh, socrates this is the period as i talked about so this is the earliest uh, that we are going to uh, go uh, for western political thought okay so 470 bc now socrates uh, is known as the father of philosophy now we'll talk about the background okay why uh, socrates uh, you know came up with his ideas or why he actually you know uh, why he is called the father of philosophy now uh, socrates was from greece okay ancient greece and in ancient greece uh, during uh, the you know at the time of socrates there was acute struggle for power you know there was a lot of trust deficit there was uh, you know society was divided you know, it was a very divided kind of society and uh, there were uh, a class of teachers i would say the teachers the philosophers who existed at that point of time in greece they were uh, known as sophists okay so in their uh, philosophy which was uh, sophism according to sophism you know man is an individual okay so since man is an individual man's self interest is uh, you know supreme so what it did was it uh, you know it uh, gave primacy to self interest over the interest of uh, society right so that uh, according to socrates was the root of the problem and uh, to solve this problem socrates held that man is not exactly an individual yes he has an individual existence but man is social so this is the very foundation of what socrates had to talk about okay that man is social okay so what happens when you say man is social is that you make him part of a society and you make him part of a society with certain obligations right and when you are part of a society and you have certain responsibility towards it you know you have to modify your behavior you have to modify your thinking you have to modify your actions according to uh, the common norms so this is where he actually laid the foundation for ethics okay so socratic uh, thought was the earliest precursor of uh, you know ethics that we study in the contemporary period okay so uh, what socrates actually did was he you know went against the sophist tradition and by going against the sophist tradition uh, he created a new trend of thinking which was known as the idealist tradition okay so this idealist tradition or uh, idealism as we uh, will talk about it uh, this idealism it held that you know uh, this whole uh, problem of uh, you know power struggle and trust deficit in society it can be solved uh, by considering man to be part of a society and not as an individual island by himself okay so now we come to the next uh, major point of uh, socratic thinking uh, by laying the foundation of ethics and uh, you know conceptualizing man as part of a society what socrates intended to do was you know advocate the concept of good life now according to socrates you know human life uh, you know it's not just about uh, you know you know you know life and death okay you just uh, just born and then you die it's not about that so according to socrates it is essential to know the how and the why of the good life now this good life was the central concern of socrates and why this good life was important 
this good life if man aspires to lead a good life then it would benefit him and the society as a whole right so this is how socrates sought to remedy the problem in greece okay by teaching people how to lead the good life now to lead the good life socrates believed that you need knowledge okay why knowledge because if you don't know what the good life means you cannot lead it okay so it's like a natural corollary you know uh, you first need to know uh, what it is and why you should lead a good life and then you can come to the how part of this question like how to lead the good life and you know what are the components of a good life so socrates held that uh, knowledge is basically virtue okay so this is the main thing okay this is the main thing and uh, you know this uh, whole uh, knowledge is virtue thing this is what you know differentiated uh, socrates from the previous uh, teachers that is the sophists now here and i would like to mention that you know there are uh, two major schools of thought uh, that we will be you know we'll be studying about uh, studying on this issue later on also so uh, the two schools of thought uh, they are you know so the first school of thought is the materialists okay and the second school of thought that socrates belonged to this was the idealist school of thought okay now the difference was that the material school of thought they gave primacy to you know material wealth to whatever your physical possession possessions are so if you own a lot of wealth if you have a lot of money then you know that means you know you're living uh, you are living a very rich and uh, you know uh, satisfactory life so that is what the materialists believed in and the sophists as i have already talked about the sophist school of thought which was existing in uh, greece at that point of time the sophists they were you know uh, die hard materialists so they were uh, you know they advocated that you know self interest of man is uh, primary and uh, man should uh, you know aspire for material wealth and according to socrates this kind of thinking you know this kind of you know mad craze for uh, material wealth mad craze for uh, you know this uh, self interest this was what had created this uh, you know trust deficit and this uh, you know poor governance in uh, greece so uh, by advocating an idealist school of thought socrates wanted to change this mode of thinking and he wanted to tell people that by thinking in idealist terms it would be beneficial for them and it would be beneficial for the society as a whole right so you know it, it makes no point if you advocate a certain idea if you you know give out a certain concept and you do not have any justification for it so socrates held that if people were to follow his line of thought then it was it would be for the benefit of everyone so you know uh, that was the way he propounded his theory so he held that knowledge is virtue that you know knowledge by itself uh, is very important so that was the socratic line of thinking and uh, uh, his method the method that he uh, advocated to gain uh, knowledge that was dialectics okay so uh, dialectics is all about uh, you know debate if i you know mention if i uh, you know say in very crude terms it's like debate okay it's it's a mode of uh, moving from uh, just mere opinion to a state of true knowledge so this is a process by which your opinion gets transformed into true knowledge so this was the prescription that uh, you know socrates gave okay so this dialectics was actually a method of dialogue actually a method of debate uh, through which people could become uh, you know 
more knowledgeable and if they could become more knowledgeable then they would come to know what a good life is they would come to know about the benefits of uh, you know leading a good life and that would uh, you know change the whole uh, sorry state of affairs in greece so this was uh, briefly you know the uh, kind of thinking that socrates had and that is that uh, uh, you know actually socrates according to socrates uh, truth okay truth and uh, uh, or uh, we can say reality okay i'll deal about uh, i'll deal with these uh, both these terms in depth when we uh, you know when we uh, get into the video uh, on plato but uh, according to socrates you know truth is already existing okay truth is already there you do not have to create truth uh, by human actions or human observation what you have to do is you just have to discover the truth okay the truth is somewhere out there it's already you know it's existing the some kind of a you know and a, a universal kind of truth that is already out there and dialectics would be the method by which you can actually discover the truth so the human soul let's say uh, you know uh, i'm a human being so by using dialectics by engaging in the process of dialogue and debate which is advocated in this process of dialectics i would be able to discover the truth okay this uh, you know what that real truth is truth is actually a very broad term and we'll talk about truth and also we'll talk about reality when we come to plato but the thing is uh, you know uh socrates held that truth is something that has to be discovered it's already there you don't have to create it by yourself right so that was the main thing now you know these are uh, just two quotes which may be relevant from upsc perspective because um, you do not uh, you know uh, get uh, direct questions from socrates it's not there in the syllabus so the first one is you know the unexamined life is not worth living this again uh, is directly uh, from socrates uh, idea of good life okay so as i've already told you uh, according to socrates uh, it is not sufficient to just you know uh, just be born and you know accumulate material wealth and then die that is not enough that is uh, you know that is not exactly human existence so according to him human existence is about you know examining our own lives now examining our own lives why is that important the reason is by examining our own lives we can engage you know engage in this uh, process of dialectics again we are back to dialectics okay so dialectics uh, by use of dialectics we'll be critically analyzing our own lives and that will help us discover the elements of good life okay so if if we were to you know summarize uh, socrates in just uh, you know a couple of words we would just talk about dialectics and we would talk about the good life okay so these were the two major prescriptions that socrates gave to uh, you know to improve the situation in greece now now the second one that we have here is all that is platonic is essentially socratic now this means that you know socrates as i have already told you had a very strong influence on plato plato was his disciple okay plato was uh, you know disciple of socrates he was very influenced by socrates and in the next video we will actually see how this happened but here just to uh, you know uh, just to mention it in brief uh, why uh plate why uh, this statement has been given uh which suggests that you know everything that was suggested by plato was essentially born out of the ideas of socrates now uh, this means that you know you have to find out similarities between their thoughts okay now what the similarities we can you know we can just jot them down one by one number one was you know uh, we'll read about them in details in the next video Uh, so number one was you know plato hated democracy so this was a very important point why 
because uh, he considered socrates to be the wisest man on earth okay he considered socrates to be the wisest man on earth who was sentenced to death by drinking poison at a time when athens was ruled by democrats so that was a shocking event for plato and plato had to uh, you know uh, witness the death of socrates and this you know this was the prime reason why he hated democracy and apart from that plato also believed in uh, the socratic line of thinking which held that you know uh, man is social okay along with that he also advocated the dialectic method of gaining knowledge besides uh, which is obvious plato also considered knowledge to be virtue okay so these were the similarities briefly now we'll be uh, talking more about them in the video on plato but this statement you know when you actually get any kind of statement in uh, political science especially paper 1 section a uh, you should always try and write both sides of the statement the statement might be saying something but there is always another side to the statement okay so for example this statement all that is platonic is essentially socratic now the the unexplored part of the statement is that all that is platonic may not be essentially socratic okay so there are aspects of plato which uh, which were not exactly given by socrates okay there were certain original ideas of plato so this will uh, this will also form a part of our answer and we can say that you know plato while uh, socrates was a father of philosophy plato applied the socratic principles okay socratic principles in the political sphere so this was the original contribution of plato because of which plato came to be known as father of political philosophy okay apart from that uh, there were two other uh, you know original concepts of plato which were you know which were not there in the ideas of socrates and that was you know number one number one was uh, the rule of philosopher king concept and the concept of communism okay so we'll not uh, talk about these things in this video this is just uh, just to you know give you a brief summary of what this statement means we'll talk about it in the plato video but this is all that you have to know uh, for socrates okay it's not there in the syllabus but nevertheless you have to get an understanding of what socrates stood for and why he stood for those things so that we can you know jump into plato which is actually our first chapter so uh, in the next video we'll deal with plato thank you for now